Hi Taurus, welcome to August 2017. August has two powerful eclipses. The first one is on August 7th in Aquarius and followed two weeks later on August 21st in Leo. This brings the action to what you do in the world, your destiny in the world, your reputation in the world, your profession in the world, your career, what you achieve, as well as how you support yourself. Now, the first eclipse is in Aquarius, and it's really interesting because full moons, it's a lunar eclipse, full moons bring things to completion. So maybe there's something you're finishing at your job. Maybe there's something that you're taking to the next level. Maybe you're getting a promotion. Um, maybe for some of you, you're moving into or wanting to move into a new position, a new job. The Leo Eclipse is bringing the action to your home, family, your inner being, how you nourish yourself, how you nurture yourself, how you support yourself. It is such an important area because without a strong foundation, we can't achieve in the world or we can't have longevity because we burn out, because we didn't do what we needed to do to support ourselves and without a strong foundation, you, you can't have longevity. We see that happen to people all the time, you know, like uh, athletes or movie stars where, you know, they OD or they do something that um, eclipses their uh, bright light. And so I find this area, the fourth house, to be incredibly important uh, because it is all about how strong we are. If we're strong on the inside, then we can overcome the challenges, the obstacles that life throws at us and achieve great things. So it's not that they're in conflict, although at times we can feel like it, that you know, uh, your personal needs are, are too demanding or family needs are too demanding, personal relationships coming at the expense of what you want to do in the world, or you're so focused on what you're doing in the world that you're not taking time for yourself you're not taking time to build those personal relationships that enrich your life and make your life better. Interesting dynamic here for you. Now this is a very positive energy. The Aquarius energy, the Leo energy, it is um, very dynamic. And Jupiter being direct now is in positive energy flow with the uh, Aquarius lunar eclipse and is sextiling the Sun and Leo reminding you that they're not, you know, your needs to be successful in the world are not in conflict with your needs to be uh, with family or having a personal life. They're not in conflict. That you can uh, serve both and find that equilibrium, find that happy balance uh, that you're seeking. With Jupiter in this area, it's empowering you for better health and better work habits, health habits, and it's in harmony with the uh, lunar eclipse. So, so that's telling me that for you, there could be some promotion coming in here at the time of the eclipse in August. Now, eclipses are so powerful that this can happen in July. It can happen at the time of the eclipse. It can happen in August. Eclipses can last for months and years because as planets move over the eclipse point, they keep reactivating it. And so uh, this is, uh, you know, a, a, a wonderful energy for you to move up in what you're doing get a promotion, expand your business, expand whatever you're doing, and feel really good about it. Now, it's interesting because there is a yod off of the sun at the lunar eclipse. A yod is a finger of God, 
and God is pointing to the Sun in Leo and that means we need to make some adjustments and for you that is all about you not being so caught up in what you're doing in the world so that you are uh, building that strong foundation with yourself with uh, family it can also mean that it's time for you to shift and evolve out of family patterns that have been holding you back maybe you've been the go-to person for everybody at the expense of what you need and your uh, career your work maybe you have not um, set enough boundaries with family members and that's draining you it's taking too much of your time and energy that you need for you to live your best life and do your best work so you know you're all on your own path and it's going to be unique for each one of you but these eclipses are going to bring to light you know what changes you need to make so that you are creating that life work balance feeling you know energized and strong and you know moving up in what you're doing achieving great things as you love to do so it is a challenge for you to do things in a new way this energy is saying hey Taurus time to do things in a new way you know we don't always have to like leave a relationship or leave a situation um, or leave a job it can be internal restructuring that's going on maybe the way we work maybe we work too much maybe you're not having enough fun and playtime and joy moves mountains and so the more joy you have the more problems fall by the wayside go poof <laughs> and that's what we want we want problems to go poof so that you are having fun and being playful and you know seeing the uh, joy in your life the laughter right humans are way too serious and uh, you know we have very little joy and laughter in our lives such a small percentage in comparison to the seriousness and you know I get it you know adults we have to be responsible we have to work we have to pay the bills right however you know it's time with these energies it's saying to be lighter and to inject a freshness into your life that feeling alive again that zest and zing for life and to stop waiting stop sitting it out and get it back in the game and live your best life have fun have that childlike wonder celebrate you celebrate being human right we're always like celebrating like achievements you know but we when do we just stop and celebrate just being you being human celebrating your spirituality and so you know take those moments to celebrate your life your living and what you're doing now if August isn't uh, intense enough with these powerful eclipses Mercury goes retrograde <laughs> Mercury goes retrograde August 12th through September 5th he starts out at 11 degrees Virgo and then backs into Leo uh, on uh, the 31st so for you it starts out in the area of uh, play creative self-expression joy laughter and then he moves back into that area of your foundation and your home so you know for some of you this can be about a past lover coming back a romantic person coming back into your life you know for others of you it can be a creative project you're working on or thinking about that you're reworking restructuring reinventing the Sun is trining Saturn on the 13th of August and is part of the Leo new moon total 
solar eclipse on August 21st. And that has the grand fire trine with it, with Saturn in Sagittarius, Uranus in Aries, to Leo, Sun, Moon, North Node, and Mars in Leo. Mars entered Leo on July 20th. So you have a huge focus going on in that area of foundation. And it's wonderful because it's uplifting and it's inspiring and it's encouraging you to shift out of patterns that no longer serve you, you know, old ancestral family patterns that you've been going along with. And now it's like you're ready. You're like, okay, this is stupid. I don't want to do this anymore. It's never been me anyway. And that is really what the universe is saying, you know, for all of us, right, is to shed those roles we play that really don't have anything to do with who you are now, right? That Aquarius full moon is shining a light on, uh, you know, moving up in what you do, right? But it's pointing to your foundation with the sun in Leo going, hey, you know, it starts in here your inner being, your truth, who you really are, how you nourish and nurture you, how you take care of you, how you build security for you, safety, how you make yourself feel safe and secure in this wacky, wacky world. <laughs> wacky, wacky world. And it's a gorgeous fire trine with your subconscious working behind the scenes, working with your psychology, working with those buttons that get pushed by others, family members that try to use guilt to manipulate you, to play you, to get you to do what they want you to do. What does that have to do with who you really are? This energy is saying, release that. Shed those roles we play to please others, to fit in, to keep the status quo, but really sacrificing your joy and your happiness and your time for you. And so this is a wonderful time for you to let go of old roles you've been playing and patterns that no longer serve you. It's time to break free and liberate your inner child. It's time to liberate your little Taurus <laughs> and let that Taurus fly and be free. And now, you know, this is a really amazing energy here for some of you you know, it's a wonderful time to get into real estate if you are, you know, considering, um, you know, purchasing property, you could get great financing, you could find property that uh, you could renovate, there's a lot of energy here, you, you know, this is a, an energy where you could find yourself, um, you know, seeing a gold mine in something, you know, that has a lot of potential, and, uh, you know, if you're not moving, you're renovating, right? And, and I talked about that in July, too, you know, because that was the first uh, Leo new moon. Two new moons in the same sign is a spiritual message from the universe. And for you, it's all about how you nourish and nurture you so that you're living your best life. How you take care of you so that you are uh, living authentically energetically, powerfully, with passion, with joy, with love, with laughter, and really changing what needs to change so that this energy is working for you, empowering you to support you so that you can achieve great things out there in the world. New moons bring new beginnings. Full moons bring completions. For some of you, you may be moving. For some of you, you may be moving out of what you've been doing. If it's not feeding you, if it's not giving you passion, the universe is nudging you out, you know, to find something that does give you passion and purpose and joy and laughter. You're being challenged to do things in a new way. And it's good. It's, it's absolutely time to do it. It is all about new starts here. And there's so much supportive energy with 
um, the eclipses. Now, yes, eclipses can be super intense because they are the most powerful transit you can experience and they herald beginnings and completions. Um, but it isn't always, you know, where we have to move or move out of a relationship or a job or something. Sometimes it's just making changes within ourselves, making changes how we relate to family members, making changes how we are relating to our, our, ourself and others, making changes in the work so that the work is more satisfying and fun for you. Now, the sun moves into your sister sign, Virgo, on the 22nd. And this is now bringing the action to true love, romance, creative self-expression. And that's fun, you know? So it's like the universe is saying, Taurus, you know, make those changes within yourself. You know, make those changes that you need to make. Make those shifts so that you are expressing more of yourself, expressing more of your joy, because it's joy and laughter that move mountains, that make problems go poof. Saturn goes direct on August 25th at 21 degrees Leo, and, you know, that's also awesome. That's, you know, forward movement energy and... You know, what have you learned since she, you know, this whole year with Saturn retrograde? What have you learned about your power? What have you learned about financing other people's money, resources, banking, investing, um, sharing with your partner, your partner's resources? What have you been learning about intimacy and trust? Who do you trust? Who do you let in? Secrets, right? This is also the area of secrets. What secrets have been revealed to you in 2017? How are you incorporating that information into your life, into your being, into your work, into what you do? This is the awakening. Venus enters Leo on August 26th. I, you know, home, beautifying the home, making the home more beautiful, finding a beautiful home. Mercury re-enters Leo on the 31st and will cross that eclipse point on August 5th, September 5th, when um, Mercury reaches that 28 degree point with the eclipse, because that's where the total solar eclipse is, is at 28 degrees, almost 29 degrees, uh, Leo. And Mercury moves back to that point, reigniting the eclipse again. That's why it keeps going well into September. And, you know, all the way through, you know, February when the eclipses happen again in this area, your destiny in the world, your foundation, one feeds the other. The stronger you are, the more you can achieve in the world. The more you achieve in the world, the more you can live like a king or a queen. <laughs> and, you know, so this is an amazing month. It's a powerful month. It's a game-changing month. It's bringing new beginnings, completions, shifting you on a very deep level. It's happening in the core of your being where the core of you is changing. And when we change on the inside, the outside changes. It's actually how it works. If we want the outside to change, we have to change first on the inside because the law of attraction is always matching. So whatever we want, more money, more success, more love, we have to change on the inside so that we're receiving it. Are you good at receiving? Taurus is such a strong sign that oftentimes Taurus is there for others, but are you there for you? Are you good at receiving? You're going to find out in August. It will be brought to your attention. Now, I do suggest waiting until Mercury goes direct on September 5th before you sign a new contract, 
buy a property, buy a car, start a new job. Now, if you have to do it before then, just read the fine print. But if you can wait until September 5th on, that is the time to initiate the new beginnings, initiate the new starts. This is, this is the time where things will complete, things will finish. You'll get tremendous insight and, you know, especially cosmic downloads that are coming in. Pay attention to what you're getting um, around the 21st as well as the 7th too, but especially the 21st. You're going to get new insight into where you need to live, who you need to live with. And all of that, you know, what needs to change for you? Maybe there's a pattern you need to change, right? Maybe it's about allowing others to be stronger, teaching them more self-reliance. Maybe it's about asking for more from others so that you are receiving. It will be unique for each one of you. Listen at the time of the eclipse and you will hear your right path, what is right for you, what you need to be doing, and then you'll know um, how to take action, how to support yourself best so that you are receiving and receiving well into the future and achieving your heart's desire. For those of you open for love, ready for love, there is a focus there. You know, Mercury is there, then the sun moves there, and we know as you go into September, you'll have that new moon there. So, you know, it's, it's coming. Let's just say it's coming. It can happen, and maybe you're already in something that is amazing and wonderful. And timing is everything, right? So you not only have your astrology, but the person you're going to be with, <clears throat> they have their astrology. <clears throat> and so it's not just waiting for when you're ready. We're also waiting for the other person to be ready. And so um, I always say, uh, don't get ready, be ready. And how do you be ready? Be the soulmate to you that you want in your life. Love you the way you want another to love you. Receive. Make your intention to receive. Because a soulmate is a giver and they're generous and they're going to want to give to you. But if you're not used to receiving from others, how are you going to receive that love? So think about that. For those of you coupled, it's a really strong time. And you could be just celebrating with your partner in the home, like your little castle, right? Or big castle, you know? It depends on, you know, where you are. You know, you could have a little castle or a big castle. But you're having fun and you're celebrating and it's beautiful. You're having fun together. You're um, maybe traveling together. You're doing things together. And it's a joyous time. Celebrate your love. Celebrate being together. Celebrate, you know, the simplest things adds joy and lightness to our lives, right? And this is what children do. Right? You know, is, is no, they're not bogged down by, you know, mortgages and bill payments and all that stuff. But they're just so in the moment of the simplest things. You know, we're going to, you know, go for a walk. Yay! You know, we're going to, you know, watch a movie. Yay! You know, we're going to order pizza. Yay! Right? Is allow that childlike wonder to be alive for you here in August. And fill you with zest and zing for life and living and doing what's right for you. Career looks awesome. Career is amazing. And you're moving up in what you do. And um, for some of you, you may just be moving on because if it doesn't hold that zest and zing anymore, it's time to look for something that does. No challenges to the money. As long as you're being true to you, if you're being true to you, you're going to find that it flows to you. The abundance flows to you. If you're living authentically, living your truth, then you're going to you're do, you're making the adjustments the universe wants you to make, and you're you're going to see the prosperity 
uh, continue to flow for you. Great time for investments, right? Especially in the area of property for you, for those that, of you that are interested in that. Spiritually growing. If you're listening, make sure you're meditating around these eclipses, taking time to be quiet. It's in the quiet spaces that we receive the divine inspiration where creator tells you, here's your next step. Here's what you're here to do. Quiet feeds the soul and opens up that soul purpose, soul agreements, soul contracts. Health is improving. Health is getting better. And the more you take time for you to rest, recharge your batteries, play, have fun, the better you're going to feel and the better life becomes. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, favoring, sharing, and Google Plus in my videos. Taurus, you're rocking awesome. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It really supports the channel. And if you would like for me to take a detailed look at your astrology, it's very easy. The link is below in the show more section. It's also up in the cards. It's very easy. You go to my astrology page, you purchase session, point checkout, you get the link to my schedule, and we're working together. Or if you're interested in coaching, you want to focus on new business idea or uh, spiritual path, life path, relationship, it's very easy. You go to my coaching page, you purchase session, point checkout, you get the link to my schedule, and we're coaching you. So until next time, Taurus, joy and laughter, move mountains. I wanted to sing for you one of my favorite childhood songs. It's A Frog Went to Courtin' and it is a love story. A frog went to courtin', he did ride a hmm, a hmm. A frog went to courtin', he did ride sword and pistol by his side a hmm, a hmm. He rode up to Miss Muzzy's door a hmm. Uh -huh. He rode up to Miss Muzzy's door where he'd often been before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He said, Miss Muzzy, are you within? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He said, Miss Muzzy, are you within? Yes, kind sir, I sit and spin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He took Miss Muzzy upon his knee. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He took Miss Muzzy upon his knee, said, Miss Muzzy, will you marry me? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Without my uncle's rat consent, uh -huh. Uh -huh. without my uncle's rat's consent, I wouldn't marry the president. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uncle Rat, he laughed and shook his fat sides. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Uncle Ratty laughed and shook his fat sides to think his niece would be a bride. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then Uncle Rat rode off to town. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uncle Rat rode off to town to buy his niece a wedding gown. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, where will the wedding supper be? Uh -hmm. Uh -hmm. Oh, where will the wedding supper be? Way down yonder by the hollow tree. Uh -hmm. Uh -hmm. The first to come was a little white moth. Uh -hmm. Uh -hmm. The first to come was a little white moth to spread out the tablecloth. Uh -hmm. Uh -hmm. The next to come was a bumblebee. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The next to come was a bumblebee. Played the fiddle upon his knee. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The next to come was a tiny flea. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The next to come was a little flea. Danced the jig with a bumblebee. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
The next to come was Mrs. Cow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The next to come was Mrs. Cow. Tried to dance but didn't know how. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now Mr. Frog was dressed in green. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now Mr. Frog was dressed in green. Sweet Miss Mouth looked like a queen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They all gathered round the lucky pair. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They all gathered round the lucky pair, singing, dancing everywhere. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then Frog and Mouse went off to France. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then Frog and Mouse went off to France. That's the end of my romance. Uh -huh. Uh-huh.